Good day. You're watching A Better Day, A Better Life. I'm your host, Debbie Givens. And this show uh, brings you topics with solutions uh, for the mind, body, and spirit growth. Today's show is a special edition, and that we'll be focusing on healing for the black community specifically. We'll be presenting a topic of healing for the mind and subsequently the spirit. Recent events in the news suggest that we have a ways to go in our development and survival as a community as black Americans. My guest today is host and producer of his own show, Mind Science, Freedom for You. And he's also a teacher, Gilbert James, teacher. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. You have a television show yes. called Mind Science, Freedom for You, and you're part of this whole loose consortium of religious, spiritual, mm. uh, scholarly historians mm -hmm. and business leaders trying to help educate and enlighten our communities mm -hmm. with higher thinking and learning meant mm -hmm. to put us on the road to healing. Mm -hmm. Talk about your show, the topics you mean to present, and your goals uh, for the show. Well, my, my program, Mind Science, Freedom for You, was specifically designed by me um, with the purpose of enabling you to have an inner awareness, an inner awareness of yourself, your true self. You see, I believe that you're not just a hank of hair and 10 pounds of clay, that you're more than that. And so what Mind Science Freedom for You does, it helps you to get that inner insight into who and what you really are, mm. where you come from, okay. so that you can be what you want to be and do the good you want to do and have to really possess and own the good that you want to have. And that could be good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and of course, more, more money. So that's basically what the program is designed to do. Now, don't be afraid of the word science, mind science. Science just means to know, to know the truth. But in, 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 our, in my program's purpose is to help you to know the truth about yourself. And so we have Mind Science Freedom for You to help people move from where they are in life, the struggles that they may be having, the conditions that we have in our communities, the situations that we're struggling with, uh, economic freedom, uh, crime, uh, dropouts, uh, police brutality, so that you can have the wisdom and the power to overcome that mm -hmm. and live the kind of quality life that you want for yourself, your family, and your community. And it has to, it has to, it starts in mind. Now let's not be uh, wishy-washy about this and let me be very clear. If you look around wherever you are right now, in your house, in the bar, or in a club, everything you see was an idea in somebody's mind. Mm -hmm. So mind is so powerful, you see? Mind is that creative power that's in you that you can tap into and change the conditions in your communities and in your situations. Wow, I uh, had a chance to, to see one of your uh, recent episodes and you covered uh, a few topics in there that, by the way, uh, relate to the, uh, the seven hermetic principles uh, which are uh, the ancient philosophies of ancient uh, Egypt and Greece. Um, they are sometimes referred to as the seven spiritual laws. And what you've just spoken about, which is the mind, uh, falls under the principle, uh, the principle of mentalist, mm -hmm. that all is in the mind, like the entire universe is, mm -hmm. is of one mind, one source, mm -hmm. and we are all reflections in it. Mm -hmm. and. There's so many important um, aspects to know about that once you start studying this and, and really getting into uh, the other principles, uh, but, but particularly of the mind, um, one of the things that we get from this is that we're all connected because we're all from the same source, we're all from one mind. Yeah. And, and that's very important when we talk about healing um, in the, the, the black community is that mm -hmm. we need to heal as a whole. And there, I have a, you know, a number of things here that, um, that, that talk about us healing as a unit. So, um, so let me also mention that in the show that, I, that you aired um, recently, the, another principle that you covered in there was karma, which mm -hmm. comes from or is a part of the principle of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. And your definition of, of karma, if I remember, is what you, what you think is what you get, I think is what yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. what you yeah. say. Yeah. And that's yeah. loosely um, 
a, uh, a or one way to look at uh, cause and effect. Mm -hmm. uh, another principle that you cover from the Hermetic principles is vibration. Mm -hmm. You like to talk about uh, changing your vibration, and that is, I mean, there's vibrational therapy. There's uh, always talk of vibration. Um, mm -hmm. Energy, you know, because mm -hmm. vibration is energy, energy, mm -hmm. and we are all energy. Mm -hmm. So there's the need for, for healing. And speaking of that, on your show, mm -hmm. you had, uh, that I, I, I was fortunate to, to, to view, you had um, an excerpt uh, from uh, Dr. Joy Leary, mm -hmm. who is the author of Post uh, Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Mm -hmm. She wrote a book in 2008, and um, we'll be showing the excerpt in a minute. Um, she uh, has quite a background. She's a social scientist and a clinical psychologist, and she's heavily degreed. She has a, uh, a bachelor degree in communications, and she has two master's degrees, one in so uh, social work and one in psychology, and then she has a PhD in social work, and she's teaching at Portland State University, uh, you know, among uh, her other things. That she's, she lectures a lot, and um, she, uh, her work traces the way um, both overt and subtle forms of racism have damaged the collective African-American people and, and our psyche mm -hmm. and have harmed, and the, the harm that's manifested through uh, poor mental and physical health, mm -hmm. uh, family and relationship dysfunction, mm -hmm. and self-destructive impulses, and you talked about them, uh, you know, particularly with youth and gangs and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, substance mm -hmm. abuse and addiction mm -hmm. and, um, and not being able to overcome them despite all the, the counseling and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And she says it's because, well, you know what, we basically haven't had any sort of um, therapy from right. Uh, right. The, the trauma. So it's, it's multi-generational, exactly. the impact. And uh, so we're gonna uh, take a moment and see where she talks about that. Um, I, we don't have, the lecture is, is an hour and 21 minutes, but um, she, at this juncture, she's talking about basically doing the math, 246 years of slavery, you know, you're taking from your homeland, your family is taken apart, um, you're, you're forced to live in another country and, and endure another language or the lifestyle, uh, not your own and by force. And, and then after 246 years, they, you know, they cut the cord and say, okay, you're free, but nobody came and said, okay, well, how are you doing? Exactly. At, at any point in that. So this is what you're gonna see uh, in this excerpt. And so, uh, you know, let's take a look at the, at the uh, at uh, Dr. Joyce Leary, she's in London giving a, um, a lecture. We're unique as individuals. Everybody's not traumatized by a traumatic event, whether it's direct or not. But when we start talking about chattel slavery, we're not talking about one trauma. We're not talking about a specific event. We're talking about generations of trauma with no intervention. Based on what I know about sugar plantations, tobacco, and the Caribbean, what I know about American chattel slavery and the plantations there, does anyone right now ever recall mental health assistance to slaves? Anybody remember sending in the therapist after I sold off your son, daughter, raped folks? Any, in, at any point? Never. Second question. After slavery was officially over, now you're free. Anybody any remember, remember any therapy then? We know it's been rough, it's been deep for you, it's been difficult, we're gonna do a little group therapy. Anybody remember that? That would be no. Number three, after slavery officially ended, both in the States, in the Caribbean, the British ended, do you remember whether or not trauma continued? Did the trauma continue for people of African descent? I need to know. Okay, so now let's do the math. Hundreds of years of trauma, no treatment. Freed, more trauma, no treatment. What do you do to math? Do you think there may be residual impacts of that trauma? Of course there is. It didn't end, friends, and it hasn't ended yet. So I think one, on one point, African people and people of African descent are extremely resilient. Matter of fact, I think we're a miracle. Far be it for us to pathologize or to look and cast this idea of weak and sick people. Oh, on the contrary, we are I'm profoundly resilient. 
because we've done everything we've done thus far with no help. I, I love her style. And she's, yeah. you know, she's in, in, the, in a room with a bunch of scholars and, 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 and professionals, and she is talking like she's talking to me and you. And, 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 it's, and it draws your attention, it keeps you uh, focused on the message, and I, I'm, I'm totally fascinated with her. Um, there's something, that, you know, obviously that she pointed out in the section that we saw, which is, she says, there was never a point of healing. <laughs> and she, all, all of us were impacted, <laughs> and she talks about how, you know, obviously it's generational, <laughs> and it's like we were raised with, by broken people, and it, and it continues from <laughs> one generation to another. So that's why the healing is a collective process. Um, and I'm just, I, I, didn't get to, I didn't get to read her book, but apparently this is, um, something that she's gone around the country and, uh, to, to speak about, and she's even been mm -hmm. in New York City, in Harlem, mm -hmm. uh, at the Abyssinian Church mm -hmm. uh, under Dr. Calvin Butts, and she talks mm -hmm. ab about that extensively. So well, one of, the, one of the things that relates to that mm -hmm. is that we, we, as a community, we get so excited sometimes when the government comes in and says, well, we're gonna do this for your community, we're gonna do that for your community. For example, a lot of times, and I've watched this throughout the years. Mm. The government would come in and rehab a neighborhood and put in rehabilitation buildings mm -hmm. or a park or things like that or a, a recreational center. Mm -hmm. They'll put a lot of money into that. But what I discovered that five years later, when I go back to those, oh, those apartments, they're still pissed up, graffitied up, broken uh, mailboxes, broken elevators. There was no change. So that told me that it's not just bringing in the physical or just bringing in money. That's not giving us healing. Exactly. What we need is to have the healing in mind, in, in spirit. Uh, we were given the opportunity to go to any educational institution. We can get educational freedom. We can go in any restaurant we want. We've mm -hmm. got uh, freedom to go in any restaurant. We can go, we can work anywhere. We can earn as much money. But we haven't touched the spiritual freedom that we need in order to really to be self-masters in our community. And so I, I with Mind Science Freedom for You mm -hmm. and some of these comedic uh, tools that you can use out there, mm -hmm. like affirmation, yes. and meditation, yes. you can use and make a change in your mindset. Because I strongly believe, and I know, that if you, my beloved brothers and sisters, would know who you are. You're not your dreadlocks. You're not your blue eyes or your brown eyes. You're not your light skin or your job or your religion. If you got to the point and knew who you really were and nourished that power that you are, that regalcy that you are, knowing that you come from the creator of the universe, then you would respect that and you would ensure that your children knew that and would respect that. And then when you have these psychotic police that come into the community, they would stop in their tracks. They won't be beating up, up and killing our people because they know that you're not gonna stand for that because you respect yourself. You know, there's a, there's a saying that in order for you to love somebody else, you gotta first love yourself. Yes. You also have another phrase where if you want things to change, be the change. Yeah. I remember you said that on your show and we, there's so much in our media um, that, that point to that. Um, one of my favorites is uh, is Michael Jackson's song "Man in the Mirror." Yeah, you know, yeah, look in there. Look you know, at, and I hope people yourself. aren't just singing along and just thinking, "Oh, what a nice song by Michael." So, "Man in the Mirror," be part, be a part of the change. Right now, I know you you have to you have to man up, my beloved brothers. You got to woman up, my beloved women. You got to say, "All right, let me get in this pathway." You have to do the work. It's not easy, but it's simple. You got to take time out doing your day and ask yourself, do the self-inquiry. Well, what, what do I really believe about myself? What do I really want to do in life? And, and that, that way you don't have to follow the crowd. I mean, everybody's working, they're going to work, holding on to that bar and, uh, you know, doing their lunch hour, they're smoking their weed, they're coming home, they're playing yes. cars, they're drinking, then they're doing <laughs> the same thing over and over. But to, to really be a master, you really have to understand that you were born a creator. Now the fact is, you did come through your mother, that's a fact. But the truth is, as Debbie had said earlier, you come from the divine source of the entire universe. Yes. 
And I'm glad you brought all of that up because uh, Ayanna Van Zant, uh, who has a show, you know, Fix My Life, and it's, it's a great show. Um, I like what she tries to do there. She went out uh, to Ferguson, Missouri, and as you know there, uh, a young teen uh, named Michael Brown on yeah. his way to college. I mean, he was going to go to college the next, very start college in the very next week. Was killed by a policeman, and as you saw on the news, um, there was quite a bit of uh, violent protests. I mean, you know, looting and starting fires and turning mm -hmm. cars over and whatnot. And you know, we always get angry when one of our own, you know, is taken out of this world that way. You know, that potential that could have been uh, is is gone, and the whole world sees that. But that kind of display of sorrow was painful to watch. And Ayanna must have been reading my mind because mm -hmm. she went out there talking about healing. And I, I was thinking the same thing. I just saw that. I said, oh my God, this, they need healing. This is something, I mean, yes, I'm angry ab about what happened, but that was, and the, even the parents begged everyone to, to, to be peaceful. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to remember this in peace. Um, I have a clip here. Uh, with her, um, she went there with a whole crew and she did a whole show on this. Um, this clip that I have is actually someone's personal footage um, and it's her gathering some people on the that are out on the street um, and she's saying a prayer. She's praying for the community, for, for Michael, uh, and uh, for all of us, um, for our ancestors who suffered uh, so that we could be here sitting in front of a camera and having this opportunity to um, to, I won't say live in the American dream. I mean, I don't know if people dream at this, uh, like this, but, and also, you know, she, she prayed for healing. And I, I thought that was a great idea. And that's where I, one of the reasons we're doing this show, because I looked at the same situation and said, we need to heal. Uh, the clip from uh, uh, Ferguson, Missouri, this is Ayanla Van Zant doing a prayer for the people and for all of us in the community. I want to lift up his mother, I want to lift up his father. I just want to lift them up right now. And I know what they meant for evil, God, I know you meant it for good. I know that something good is about to happen. It's happening right now. It's growing up in our feet, God. And we're rooting ourselves in an awareness, in a trust, in a faith, in the good that is coming right now. From the pit of the earth where our grand, our ancestors are buried. On this soil that our great-grandmothers and our grandmothers worked. Where they worked and raised communities communities, God, we know that in the DNA of our beings, we know what to do. And we are calling it forth right now, God, and we ask that you give it to us more than we fear it. We ask that you give us the voice. We ask that you give us the clarity. We ask that you give us the courage to call out the things that need to be called out to make life better for those coming up behind us. God, we don't know what you will do, but we know what you can do. And we're going to stand on the an unlimited and glorious possibility of the fact that you love us, that you've always loved us, that you continue to love us. God, you're loving us right now. We thank you, God, that you called these 13 forward and that you're saving them from a, a fate, God, that somebody else would have for them. We ask that you turn them around in their minds, their hearts, and their lives so much so that they can't go back to be who they used to be, but they're going to be who this community needs, who their children need, who the public needs, who the world needs. They will no longer be who other people expect them to be, but they will be warriors, powerful and strong and courageous in spirit, moving forward with the lifeblood of Michael Brown. God, we just thank you. Wow. I'm, I'm moved. She, she is a minister, which I didn't know, and she's our ordained minister um, in addition to doing these shows. Um, and so she comes to us spiritually. Um, there's another scene um, that there was on TV. I don't have the clip of it, but she actually says a prayer for his, his soul's, uh, Michael Brown's uh, soul's continued journey, uh, you know, that it was cut short. And as you know, we're all here to, um, to improve our spirits. Um, to get rid of baggage and, uh, and expand our awareness um, and uh, our spiritual consciousness and to, and to pull in more good and leave in joy. And so his, his journey on that got cut short. So 
her her prayer to him was quite um, well uh, felt. Yeah, she's so beautiful. I saw her at the Apollo when she was at the Apollo in Harlem. Mm. A friend of mine and I went there to see her. Um, I think that one of the things you had mentioned earlier about the comedic uh, principles, right. one of the um, is cause and effect karma. Mm. Uh, we have to realize, back to mind science, is that we have two aspects of our mind. And I just want to tell you a couple of points on this. Mm -hmm. You have a conscious mind. The conscious mind chooses and selects. You go to Macy's and you buy a blue pair of pants. You chose that. That's your conscious mind in action. Okay. You go to 125th Street and you get one of them African-American or Afri Afro history books. That's your conscious mind choosing that. Mm -hmm. Now, your, the other aspect of your mind is your sub conscious mind is okay. below the conscious mind. The, the nature of the subconscious mind, it doesn't choose like your conscious mind does. The nature of your subconscious mind is only, only to bring into manifestation, into your world, into your relationships, into your experiences, what you impress upon it. It doesn't say, if you think something negative, it doesn't say, well, oh, I'm not going to bring that into expression, that's negative. It doesn't care. So you have to be very careful what you think about. So if you're always thinking about killing the police or, or, or beating up your girlfriend or getting high during your lunch hour, then the, and, and, and your subconscious mind takes that and there's no getting away from that. And it says, okay, this is what you want in life and that what is expressed in your world. Similarly, the opposite. If you impress your subconscious mind with some positive stuff, well, I'm going to encourage my children not to drop out of school, and I'm going to do that on a regular basis. I'm going to eat well so I can be healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. Then your subconscious mind takes that impression and moves you physically to realize that idea of good. So that's cause and effect right there. Right, and some of that gets incorporated into different... Um uh, philosophies, programs, therapies, um, and, and the whole idea is to change, is changing your vibration or mm -hmm. making a shift. Mm -hmm. Barbara DeAngelis talks about uh, transforming yourself by making this shift. Right. You can't just keep controlling yourself, like, okay, I'm going to try not to keep cursing people out when they, you know, step in front of me on the street. Mm -hmm. You have to, to make enough change to shift so that it doesn't bother you when somebody steps in front of you, so you don't have to manage your reactions mm -hmm. and your behaviors. Mm -hmm. it, it, it will be automatic. Mm -hmm. Gee, that used to bother me that mm -hmm. somebody would step in front of me mm -hmm. like that uh, uh, without saying excuse me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But now you can just, oh, just walk around them and, you know, mm -hmm. and, it does, and it doesn't occupy any part of you. It was just a reaction mm -hmm. because you've already reprogrammed yourself mm -hmm. or made that shift that mm -hmm. it doesn't bother you. Mm -hmm. and you just go on with your day and you don't even mention it. You don't even get somebody on the phone to complain about you. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like you start eliminating negative behavior right. because you've made that shift. And that's actually all of this, all the, well, the three principles that mm -hmm. we've mentioned, uh, the mind, uh, the karma, mm -hmm. and, and the vibrational energy, changing your vibration, mm -hmm. uh, preferably higher. Right. Uh, Once you get into a high vibration, you as an individual, you, you, you function at a higher level of living and perspective. A classic example is a friend of mine who was walking down the street, I think it was in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and some muggers were coming towards her. And instead of panicking and coming down to a lower vibration of fear, fear is a very low vibration, mm -hmm. she lifted up, her, she made a shift in mind and lifted up her vibration and started praising the Most High, God, Allah. She started praising the Source. And those guys, when the muggers came upon her, they said, no, we can't touch this woman. And they turned around and walked away. It's, it's similar to you going down a block, and it's a tough block, and you're in a high vibration. You're in a higher fre frequency. The higher frequency, positive thinking, positive attitude, is sort of like light, L-I-G-H-T. It represents light. Mm -hmm. And so... A dark element of self-doubt uh, and anger and resentment and hatred can't see you because you become almost invisible to darkness. And so that's why it's important for us to do the things, to mm -hmm. do the practices, 
to work with the tools that enable us to be at a higher vibration so that if somebody says something to us bad on our job, mm -hmm. uh, it could be a coworker, it could be a boss or something like that, it wouldn't have any, any effect on us because we're not at that level. Now you could consciously come down to that level, but it's more healthier spiritually and mentally for our community is if you, you're functioning at a high level of vibration. Right. And so that's one of the things I'd like to teach, you know, to bring, you know, to the African-American um, community. Um, believe it or not, right here in Harlem, we have something called the Key Energy of Harlem, Center of Harlem, excuse mm. me. And I believe a proponent of that is, or actually the, one of the proprietors is William A. Rogers. Mm -hmm. He does a column in the Harlem News Group mm -hmm. uh, called uh, Urbanology. Mm -hmm. And a really important and I hope everyone gets a chance to, uh, to experience or at least hear about it. It's called Family uh, Ancestry uh, Healing, um, where the healing is on a generational basis. And, um, and it involves, again, vibra vibrating and energy. Mm -hmm. uh, it also involves the mind. Mm -hmm. And as we stated, and, and, and as Dr. Joyce Leary mentioned, it's because it happens because of what your ancestors went through, there are some things that we are going through now, and we can heal everybody along that chain. Mm -hmm. People that have been here before us, and we can even set it up through prayer um, to ask for protection for our descendants. Mm 